No person with a, a, an even, even a casual relationship with the federal budget and or an IQ above a root vegetable believes that every single penny being spent today in the United States government's budget is being spent efficiently. I mean, it's just not, Mr. President. You know that. You've run a state before. You've, you've put it together a budget before. It's not. For example, we waste $144 billion a year, every year, on improper payments. We send checks to people who are not entitled to receive them for, for the earned income tax credit, for example. We spend money to, on people who don't exist or aren't qualified to receive Medicaid. We even send money to debt people, and they cash the checks, or at least their relatives do. And even if we could reduce that $144 billion by 10%, or 20% or 25%. We're talking a very, about a very large amount of recurring revenue. A very simple solution, I've suggested this to the White House, which hasn't responded, but we have passed legislation in this body, as you know, to try to stop sending checks to dead people. There's just one problem. It was made effective three years from now. I had to agree to it in conference to get the bill passed. There's no good reason for it, other than some lobbyists insisted on it. President Biden right now, I think, could, could pick up at least 10 billion, maybe more, we're not sure how much, by just saying effective immediately, my administration is no long, longer going to send checks to dead people. I mean, who's gonna get mad? Who supports sending money to dead people? American people don't. A lot of the money we appropriated in the last coronavirus bill has not yet been spent. And number two, we're no longer in an economic crisis. The main crisis we have right now is our, our small business women and small businessmen can't find workers. So we're currently not in an economic crisis. And I, I, I think that we can go back and take some of that money. In my state in Louisiana, it's going to take some aspects of my state government, it'll take them 10 years to spend all the money we sent to them in the last bill. The CPO took the entire federal non-military workforce, on which we spend about $220 billion a year because we have to have workers. And they took every job in the federal government and compared it to every job, the, every equivalent job in the private sector. It was a massive study. So it's apples to apples. And the federal government or rather the CBO found that the federal government on average pays a federal worker 17% more annually than we pay the same worker in the private sector. Now, I don't begrudge anybody in living, but what if we could reduce that to 15% or 12%? What, what if we could just not automatically fill every vacancy? What if we actually stopped and asked ourselves, if this position has been vacant for eight months, maybe we don't need it. I think there are enormous savings to be had. We're the most generous nation in all of human history. We American people spend about a trillion dollars a year at all levels of government helping our neighbors and, and some folks who aren't our neighbors who are less fortunate than we are. But we have, we spend about 75, 76 billion dollars a year on Medicaid and on food stamps for adults who are able-bodied, who are 55 years of age and younger, and who don't have children. And many of them could work. Denmark does an extraordinary job. They're very generous in Denmark with their payments for unemployment. But they also have an infrastructure set up in government, which we could do, which works with people to get them a job, to get them off welfare. And Denmark has saved an enormous amount of money. Let me say it again. Am I saying we could save 100% of that $75 billion? No. I don't know how much we could save. Nobody else does either because we've never tried. Now, in about, I don't know, seven minutes, I I've just given, given you four or five ideas. I'm not pretending that I just discovered gravity or something. This is an earth-shaking. I mean, you can find this with just a cursory 
uh, amount of research. Just call the folks over at, at, at the Congressional Budget Office. Mr. President, this body does not have to uh, automatically raise taxes to pay for infrastructure. Now, I know some of my colleagues disagree with me. Some want to raise uh, the gasoline tax. Uh, the, the, um, the president, well, I think he wants to raise every tax, known to man and beast, to spend on infrastructure and other things. And, and that's, he's the president. He's and he's an American, he's entitled to his own opinion. But, but um, I, I don't think we spent nearly enough time looking at our current spending and asking ourselves if we could, could reprioritize some of the ways that we're spending taxpayer money. Let me put it another way, Mr. Mr. President. No person with a, a, an even, even a casual relationship with the federal budget and or an IQ above a root vegetable believes that every single penny being spent today in the United States government's budget is being spent efficiently. I mean, it's just not, Mr. President. You know that. You've run a state before. You've, you've put it together a budget before. It's not. For example, we waste $144 billion a year, every year, on improper payments. We send checks to people who are not entitled to receive them for, for the earned income tax credit, for example. We spend money to, on people who don't exist or aren't qualified to receive Medicaid. We even send money to debt people, and they cash the checks, or at least their relatives do. Now, I'm not naive. I know we will never, ever, an organization as large as the federal government will never be able to avoid 100% of improper payments. I understand that. But we ought to at least try, particularly on sending the checks to dead people. And even if we could reduce that $144 billion by 10% or 20% or 25%, we're talking a very, about a very large amount of recurring revenue. A very simple solution, I've suggested this to the White House, which hasn't responded, but we have passed legislation in this body, as you know, to try to stop sending checks to dead people. There's just one problem. It was made effective three years from now. I had to agree to it in conference to get the bill passed. There's no good reason for it, other than some lobbyists insisted on it. President Biden right now, I think, could, could pick up at least $10 billion, maybe more. We're not sure how much. By just saying effective immediately, my administration is no long, longer going to send checks to dead people. I mean, who's going to get mad? Who supports sending money to dead people? American people don't. Number two, we could repurpose the money, a lot of the money that we've already appropriated. I, I've lost count of how much money we have appropriated or uh, the coronavirus, not just on the public health, but also for our economy. And look, I voted for many of the bills. I didn't vote for the last one because I thought the last one was unnecessary, it was too expensive, and it really wasn't about the coronavirus. But I think all fair-minded people can agree right now on two things. Number one, a lot of the money we appropriated in the last coronavirus bill has not yet been spent. And number two, we're no longer in an economic crisis. The main crisis we have right now is our, our small business women and small businessmen can't find workers. So we're currently not in an economic crisis. And I, I, I think that we can go back and take some of that money. In my state, in Louisiana, it's going to take some aspects of my state, government, it'll take them 10 years to spend all the money we sent to them in the last bill. And I can tell you, given the option to my state, they're going to choose to spend that money on infrastructure and not on what Congress sent them the money uh, to spend it on. Num number three. There's a, there's a very interesting study by the CBO uh, between uh, taking the years, I think it was 2013 to 2017, the CBO took the entire federal non-military workforce 
on which we spend about $220 billion a year because we have to have workers. And they took every job in the federal government and compared it to every job, the, every equivalent job in the private sector. It was a massive study. So it's apples to apples. And the federal government, or, or rather the CBO, found that the federal government, on average, pays a federal worker 17% more annually than we pay the same worker in the private sector. Now, I don't begrudge anybody in living, but what if we could reduce that to 15% or 12%? What, what if we could just not automatically fill every vacancy? What if we actually stopped and asked ourselves, if this position has been vacant for eight months, maybe we don't need it. I think there are enormous savings to be had. The, the final thing I'll point out, Mr. Chairman, doing is better than having. Doing is better than having. And, 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 and you're happier when, you're, when, when you have earned something than when somebody has just given it to you. We're the most generous nation in all of human history. We American people spend about a trillion dollars a year at all levels of government helping our neighbors and, and some folks who aren't our neighbors who are less fortunate than we are. But we have, we spend about $75, $76 billion a year on Medicaid and on food stamps for adults who are able-bodied who are 55 years of age and younger and who don't have children. And many of them could work. Now, I know there are obstacles to them being able to work. Maybe they need help looking for a job. Maybe they need employment counseling. Maybe they need help with transportation. But we could save enormous amounts of money, and our citizens, our people, our neighbors who are receiving this money would be better off if they had a job. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. All we have to do is look at, to Denmark. Denmark does an extraordinary job. They're very generous in Denmark with their payments for unemployment. But they also have an infrastructure set up in government, which we could do, which works with people to get them a job, to get them off welfare. And Denmark has saved an enormous amount of money. Let me say it again. Doing is better than having. Am I saying we could save 100% of that $75 billion? No. I don't know how much we could save. Nobody else does either because we've never tried. Now, in about, I don't know, seven minutes, I I've just given, given you four or five ideas. I'm not pretending that I just discovered gravity or something. This is an earth shaking. I mean, you can find this with just a cursory uh, amount of research. Just call the folks over at, at, at the Congressional Budget Office. And, and ask them, how are some ways we can save money in our federal budget? And, and I just think we would all feel so much better. I know the American taxpayer would feel a lot better. If just for a little while, as we talk about the importance of infrastructure, true infrastructure, roads, bridges, broadband, if we, if, if, if we just spend a little while as we talk about the infrastructure, how, how to pay for it without putting our hand even further, deeper, and more frequently in the taxpayers' pockets, because it can be done. I watched you do it, Mr. President of Colorado. I mean, I, 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 I've, seen, I've seen too many public officials do it, and, and I think we need to at least try. With that, Mr. President, I suggest the absence of a quorum.